All right, uh, welcome everybody to the Savius headquarters in Walnut Creek. Today we are going to be introducing the Savius Insight. So you just received this box and it's your brand new Savius Insight unit. What we want to do today is take it out of the box, talk a little bit about it, and show you how to connect it. Let's go for it. All right, so we've got the device out of the box, and here's what is included. You've got the unit itself, and of course, a power supply and an RJ45 network adapter. So, as you can see, very small device. Uh, there are no moving parts in this device. It's very lightweight. You basically connect it between your cable modem and your router. On the back is the power adapter, where you'll connect it up to your power, and a on off button and a reset button that uh, puts it back to factory defaults. Everything else is on the front. Here we've got our six ports, uh, two of which are hardware bypass. And that is the primary use case for this device, is to connect it between your cable modem and your router. And that way it can analyze all the traffic going through your network. There are a few other ports that you can use to connect and capture traffic from various network segments in your office. And then there is also two USB ports and a serial connector if that's how you want to configure it. However, the device is configured by default for DHCP, so when you connect your management port to ETH0 here, it will automatically acquire a DHCP address and you can use that address to connect directly to the device. All right. Let's go ahead and connect the device up to the network so that we can configure it and access it with our software. So first of all, we're going to want to plug the device into the power. Power has a nice little uh, screw here so we can connect it nice and snug and if it gets a little pull, it's not going to be pulled out. And then uh, we are going to connect our device between our cable modem and our router. So. Here's my cable modem, and here's my router. Of course, we're going to use the bridge ports here. And by the way, this is a hardware bypass. These are all 1 gig ports, so you can connect this up to a 1 gig network, and all the traffic will pass through without any problem. So here's my cable modem, and here's my router. I am now in line to my network, and when I turn the device on, all the traffic from my network will pass through this device and we'll get all the analysis we need to have remote visibility into this network. Finally, of course, we will need to connect it uh, to the network itself, uh, to uh, the management port, so that we can interact with the device. That's ETH0. And as I mentioned before, there are a few other ports if you have internal segments that you want to monitor. So with that, everything's connected, and we'll go ahead and hit the power button on the back of the machine and you will see the lights come up and it will go ahead and boot. Uh, so you know give it about 30 seconds to a minute and it will acquire a DHCP address by default and you will be able to use that address to connect with either OmniPeak or your web browser to get to our dashboards or to our web config page, which you can use to, to uh, configure various settings on the device. So it's, it's probably almost done. Now, by the way, if you don't have a DHCP server or you want to enter a static IP address, you would just not connect the management port to the network. You would connect the management port directly to your laptop and there would be no DHCP server, so it would default from DHCP to a static IP address at 192.168.1.21. So then you would set your laptop to like .20 and you could access it that way and give it whatever IP address you wanted. Uh, it is set for DHCP because when you buy these in multiples of tens or twenties or hundreds, uh, it's much easier to deploy them to your remote sites and hook them up in DHC, DHCP mode. All right, we got it all hooked up. Now, that was pretty easy, but if you want to follow the step-by-step -step instructions, we, it does come with a very easy to follow quick start guide, which will lead you through the steps we just went through. And if you have any other questions about it, you can refer to the Insight portal on the Savvyus website. 
So you got it all connected up and you have a DHCP IP address. You're pretty much good to go. But let's say there's, just, there's some other configuration you want to do. We do have an easy to use web config page that you can just enter your IP address here. So we can see how to configure the insight if necessary. The first thing you're going to do is enter root savvius into the login screen and it's going to want you to change your password. So confirm the password with savvius and then enter whatever your permanent password will be. And submit. Now this is our config web page. You can see this is where you change from DHCP to static. You can change the time settings, add an NTP server you know change what your time zone is and then we have our reporting options it does have long-term reporting built in it is enabled by default you can also send all the data to a remote elastic uh, server just by entering the IP address of that you can also change the maximum space that's used in order to increase the amount of time that your reporting will be stored on the device of course, you have to balance this with the amount of CTD that you want to do. And of course, you can enter a separate password for the dashboards and you would apply that. This is all optional if you want to make these changes. The device comes completely configured and you can just take your IP address and enter it directly into your web browser to get to our long-term reporting dashboards. Here we're showing you a few of those. We've got many different dashboards for all the different analytics that you can see in Insight. Here we have the flows dashboard, we've got the network dashboard. You can see there are many different statistics for each, usually including some metrics at the top and some statistics in a list. And then let's just go on over to OmniP, which is the traditional way to interact with our Omni appliances. And we would just connect to the device using the IP address that we were given, the same IP address we used to connect to the web connect, web config page and here we are for those of you who are familiar with OmniPeak and interacting with Omni appliances the functionality is exactly the same you can see we've already got a number of captures configured by default that are used for reporting but we could go and create a new capture at any time I'll do that on the bridge port and we'll just check our options here make sure that all of our analysis options are enabled and we want the bridge adapter and we'll hit OK. Uh, it'll ask us to optimize. Don't do that. Just say continue. And there you can see we've got another capture. We'll go ahead and start that capture. And as you will see, we'll start collecting packets. There they are. So we're going to open that capture. So here we are at uh, OmniPeak, the timeline view, the network view, the applications view. Uh, there's a lot going on in there. You can see the packets themselves and this is all the statistics and the packets that you're seeing from the directly from the Insight device. And of course you could have many of these on your networks, your remote, remote office locations, seeing exactly what's going on in those offices. So a few more the flows view showing you all the flows all the voice over IP calls if you have any and you've got the insight plus there's our peer map there's our applications dashboard and countries of course a very high level overview but giving you just a you know, little glimpse at our, what our visualizations are uh, now of course you can capture packets along the way we just checking here to see that we have CTD on and if so well at any point in time you can go and do a forensic search on a, a period of time in the past and then do the analysis and get the packets for that period of time just going through making sure that all the settings we want let's just enable them all actually going through the packets that were saved on the disk using the capture to disk functionality and the forensic search is done we get our analysis and then we can do that troubleshooting so there's Savius Insight in a nutshell I uh, hope you enjoyed it and I hope this helps you to get going quicker when you receive your Savius Insight device We got our device out of the box and we're about to connect it. But before we do that, I gotta do my favorite test, the drop test. All right, here we go. Let's see how well it does. Actually, 
please don't do that. You will void the warranty.